Let us compare and contrast the fair value method with the equity method, just for a moment. Investments that are carried at fair value um, would be a situation where you don't have significant influence and also obviously where consolidation is inappropriate. And it would be appropriate when the investor doesn't have any control over the investee, i.e. consolidation doesn't fit. And this is really the traditional accounting approach for investments. And the idea of fair value accounting has been innovated by the FASB over the last 20 years. Previously, this would be the cost method and we would avoid marking these investments to market. But over time, this has been changed. And one reason why it's been changed, by the way, is just to conform more closely with international accounting. So um, in, in the old days, this would be cost method. You would value these at cost unless they're, they're really marketable securities. The equity method, obviously, again, as I've said before, is used when you can exercise significant influence. And um, if you have to consolidate, then you have to consolidate. You might use the equity method on your books, but consolidation is going to erase the effects of the equity method and treat the two companies, the parent and the sub, as if they're one company. And we're going to talk about how to do that in a couple of minutes. And the way the equity method is going to be reported is that that investment will be reported as a single line item on the balance sheet and usually as a single line item as the income statement. So again, when you record an investment, whichever method you're using, it's going to be recorded at individual cost. Under the fair value method, the book value, the, the balance sheet value is going to be the fair value on the date of the balance sheet. So you're going to need to continuously update that book value to the fair value each time you report a new balance sheet. Under the equity method, it's going to be the cost plus your share of income or minus your share of any losses and also minus any dividends that are declared. Income under the fair value method will be recorded when the investee receives dividends for whatever value of investments that the div dividends that the investor receives. And also, of course, if you sell the investment, any gains or losses. Under the equity method, income will be recorded when the investee reports income. Now, you may also record income if you sell a share of the investment and you have a gain. When the investee declares dividends, then that under the fair value method, that's going to be income. But under the equity method, that's going to be reduction of investments. That is a big difference. So here's a little exercise. Philip invested $650,000 in Sleeper, which is 25% owned. In 20x4, Sleeper earned $360,000, declared dividends of $240, and paid dividends of $160. And the fair value of the investment at year end is $655. So how much in, does Philip's report? So let's go one method at a time. Under the fair value method, the dividends would be ink, ink with the dividends would be recorded. So if sleeper declared 240,000 in dividends, it's going to be declared, not paid 25% of that 240 divided by 25% would be 60,000. And then also the write up in value, it was previously on the books for 650 and now it's going to be on the books for 655. So you would also have this $5,000 write up in book value um, under the fair value method. The book value of the investment at year end would be 655 because that's the fair value. And the increase in retained earnings then would be 65,000. It would be 60,000 of the share of the dividends plus the $5,000 um, write up to fair value. Under the equity method, investment income would be based on your share of income of the sub. So in this case, and I'm referring to it as sub, I'm sorry, investee. It's not really a sub because you own less than 50%. So here you earn 360000 So one quarter of that, 360 divided by 4, is $90,000. That would be your investment income. Your investment in sleeper at year end would be six fifty. Plus 90, your share of the income, 
minus your share of the dividends, which would be 160,000 times 25% or $40,000. And your retained earnings increase would be $90,000. Let's just say that 650 plus 90 would be 740 minus 40, it would be $700,000. Little mistake, I was wondering if you caught it, this $240,000, it's not, this is on 60 divided by four, this paid dividends is irrelevant to us because they didn't really, here, they didn't really, um, paid dividends is not relevant, it's declared dividends. So 240 divided by four would be 60 so therefore you would subtract 60,000 and then you would get here 680. Want to see if you're paying attention.